Hello. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, for this audience, but maybe for the other audience, um, I'll try and adapt it in the in the Q and A. Um, but uh, so I'll first talk about many to millennials. It'll probably be about um, seven slides or so. I'll go through that, and then we can have any questions that you specifically have in regards to uh, these topics. And as I mentioned, I, I run Next Big Future. It has about uh, three million page views per month and uh, is the number one science news blog online. Okay, so at this uh, talk and at other talks, there's always discussion about what artificial intelligence will cause mass unemployment. And there's also a lot of concern about the uh, debt bubble around uh, people getting degrees. So what's going to work and be successful in the future? What's a good strategy for people to have? So it still goes out to, to basic economics of um, supply and demand, okay? So you wouldn't want to, to pick um, a degree where you're gonna be competing and, and having to get a job where the other people already have 10, 20 years experience. You know, you want to want to get into, say, Java programming or SAP work, you know, computer science examples, where someone needs to have 10 years experience, needs to go through two full cycles of, of implementation in order to be successful. And in this case, the picture I have, you know, someone picking a fight with Muhammad Ali kind of thing, where someone, you know, you don't want to end up in a fight where someone's bigger, stronger, more experienced, and you're just going to lose. Um, especially if there's the issues around um, automation where, where jobs will, will go away. And also it may not be the, the fact that you'll have AI just wiping stuff out. Far earlier than that, and what's already happening, is in things like um, financial analysis, where say the salary was between 100000 and $150,000 per year, or also for certain computer work where you need a certain number of years of experience and again you would make that kind of salary. And then what's happened is a lot of that has dropped down to sixty or eighty thousand dollars per year because a new cloud tool has come out that makes it far easier to do that work or some other change in business process has enabled you to do work with less, less experience. Somewhat good for uh, someone new entering the field in that they can now get work with uh, less training, but for someone in, in the existing area, uh, the company may want to fire you to, to hire someone at a lower wage or just drop your wage down to that level. So it doesn't have to be that you get, you know, like the, the truck, automatic truck driving example where things get wiped out. If you're just suddenly facing competition from overseas labor, from something else, some change in the process where suddenly the um, your wage suddenly just takes the, take the big hit, right? Or also the, the level of work goes away and like the dock bomb happened and suddenly people were, who were doing that in 2001, 2002, you know, became unemployed for, for multi-year periods. So what would be the strategy? You want to look at new technologies if, if you're either restarting again or if you're looking at new work where a wave is just emerging and you have to be able to identify how, much, how many legs that, that thing has to say, okay, like in, in the Silicon Valley, there could be a new billion dollar unicorn startup company that's trying to come out and they have a weekend session where it's a boot camp where you can get trained up on the new technology. If you go to that boot camp, all the people there, say 100, suddenly now have equal skills to everyone outside the company related to that new technology, right? So then you can ride that. If you were good at picking it, then that may be something that could last you for, for many years. So you want to be able to pick something where you can get a fast startup and you want to also have general skills so that you can quickly, if you got that session, actually be able to apply it. So one other aspect of that would, uh, would be debt. So if you're going to, it was always a bad idea, a bad strategy for someone to spend $100,000 on a degree or $200,000 on a degree. And do it in some liberal arts thing where they're gonna make $30,000 a year, right? That was always a bad strategy. But now, you have the added concern that that thing that you thought was good and maybe good for a year or two suddenly gets devalued or gets wiped out and now you still have the debt and you don't have the income making potential that you thought you would have by making that investment of not just money but time into that 
or it became a dead end. So you need to look at uh, certain the online education systems to rapidly test several things. See, test to see if you're good at it, if you have aptitude, you're going to be better than other people at it. <clears throat> Two, if you like it, and then, uh, and then also to, to have a lower cost time and investment approach to test to see, is this going to work for me before you then look at doing, doing more with it. So rapidly test and fail at something or, and then find the one that, that, can, that can work for you. And then we can now discuss more general topics around that area if you have any questions around work and career. But the, the summary examples were just uh, <clears throat> find ways to minimize your, your investments in, in cost and time and selection and then also to avoid debt because that's gonna, an expense that's going to be your burn and then and be able to rapidly adapt and change yourself to any new uh, situation. Okay, any questions that we have here? About uh, career, jobs, education? Yes? Brian, thanks for your presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, as a, I've, I've already had two careers. Mm -hmm. And I imagine uh, the other people in the room, mm -hmm. that they need to be adaptable to, to creatures. Right. For an older person, is there any advice you, you would give them mm -hmm. when they're still going to be in the job market, say, for, for another 10 years? Right. So y you have to be um, in tune with things that could um, cause problems for, you, for your career. Like if you're, if you're looking at it, like could, could you end up losing your job? Could it end up being dropped? So you have to have at least some constant monitoring of that to be able to uh, react to that. Two other things would be to, you know, always have an updated resume, you know, with the as a problem solution result format so you can you break up your your experience into a, you see the problem what's the solution what were the roles I have and be able to and have that longer list um, so you have your resume and then you have some longer list of problem solution results say five times longer ten times longer so that you can uh, select out that into a new resume if you like to recast it like if I had to like go for another career how can I recast it based on problem and solution that I've, I've solved before? That way you can get a job search uh, spun up faster, right? So one was so the foresight to know if you needed to make an adjustment, um, two, having a more rapid and adaptable response to searching for any new career. And then something I have is saying I have a day job and I also have my, my website. Um, as I've been launching that for like 10, 12 years, I, if I had quit my work to do the website, I would have immediately started a burn to, to do that. Um, you know, I have other expenses, have kids and things like that. That would immediately cause, so that would, less pressure to have the second career as a monetized hobby, right? So that could be another way to do things. So to have something where it's already going towards something that could be a full-time career or a backup is something, another way to, to look at things. Um, and then to uh, you know explore other options for how you can generate money either through assets, um, renting out property, the, the shareable economy, those kinds of options. Yeah. Uh, over here first, and then over there. Yeah. Uh, you said one of the problems with having the, you know making sure you get a good job is making sure you always have a good general skill set. Yeah. Um, one thing I've noticed uh, here is uh, it's the public school system. The people that are newly introduced to the job market aren't exactly getting the general skill sets they have, and because of that, they're falling into this massive amount of debt that they need. Right. Um, what are some resources that low-income families can use to prepare themselves for those general skills? So, um, can we reiterate the question. Okay. The the question was um, um, people. You need to have a generalized skill set uh, to be able to learn new things and, and quickly um, be able to scale up to be able to, to have a career or business or something in that capability. And for the education system, people aren't getting the basic skills and education to to have that core capability of, of work. Um, so my advice around that is that um, 
if it's the basic um, high school equivalent education of reading, writing, and those kind of things, uh, the one, they should try to get to probably a better school, but if they need to get to um, a um, alternative schooling, um, there is other programs for like Russian math, for, for math, there's some other English programs where you could get supplemental education towards that. The other approach is just to, um, if you have children of that age or someone that just a high schooler, to just do a large amount of, of traditional um, reading, writing, and math work. Because um, I think in the Asian school system, of just doing a lot of problems is just the way to, to do it. Like if I had, um, back in my education period, um, had inferior, if I had problems with math, you could just get the, um, they had the problem books with you know, 10,000 linear algebra problems, and you'd get that, you know, would work through it. And it's just that, uh, that mastery thing of doing 10,000 hours or something, or you know, 10,000 problems, it's, you know, I think some rote learning is a way to get to that. <clears throat> Once you, and then there's also there's online education that you can use to, to supplement that. So I would use the online education and these other programs. Also, you can look at uh, community college, where um, if you do, again, another way to reduce the cost around that, where you get the, to the community college, lower cost, and then transfer to a higher education, which has higher cost. Once, and then you have picked it and that kind of thing. Um, did I answer your question? Okay. And then over here, I have a last question. Briefly, I was curious, as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. in this job market, uh, what tips might you offer for being more successful early on as opposed to less successful? Yeah. So I think it's um, it's a matter of um, th there's the books around the lean startup uh, where you try and create a, um, the minimal viable product and um, and rapidly get to something that you can test with consumers to see if you can fail it out or figure how you need to adjust it. Um, so I think rapid testing is the way to, to do it. Like instead of just thinking about it, you need to actually get to the point where you can get it to other people. You know, whether it's ideas, whether it's um, actual product, to say, you know, does this actually work for you? And then to, you know, do A-B testing and that kind of stuff. But to, to rapidly figure out what's wrong, rapidly figure out what you can fix, rapidly know if it's going to work, as opposed to saying, okay, I'm going to spend five years and have the belief that it's going to be there, actually get in front of people and, and test it. So the faster you can fail it, faster you can, the more tests you can do, the better you Okay. Any other questions? Oh, one more, yeah. Um, given the current economy, yeah. have you ever thought what might be a problem solution for young people in choosing career mm -hmm. if you see in connection with the economic situation, mm -hmm. what would be, would be your, your advice mm -hmm. or the activity things? We can solve this problem of debt. Mm -hmm. by suggesting this, or trying this, or building a coalition of individuals that are starting career, yeah. and they uh, could start building a solution for that. Okay, so, so the question is, is uh, how do young people work together on solving the debt problem, or, or, or people work together on, on solving that, part of the community and that kind of thing. So. Um, So the aspect of, of generating income can, can be a tougher problem to solve. So that's why I did in my talk discuss the aspect of, of debt control. There is um, a, um, a radio program, um, Dave Ramsey's who talked about um, really aggressively paying down debt, which is going more toward the Depression era concepts of avoiding debt and, and rapidly paying that down. So the higher the uncertainty, the more that you're not sure that you're gonna have this income, right, whether current or potential, then the more you have to reduce the, the, the negative risk impacts of having to pay stuff out, to have the burn, right? So if you can, people can have more control over the debt aspect, either by not 
spending on something that may not work out in terms of a hundred thousand dollar 200k degree and say oh now I don't have the 200k lawyer job so you have to be sure have some certainty and maybe and some people will succeed with it but it's a risk and they have to know that going in right so one avoid the spend if, if it's if you're you need to that goes to rapid testing you need to figure out if it's going to work right the sooner you can the lower cost you can then then the better for you and then aggressively addressing debt a lot of people um you know go and, and once they can afford the down payment get the big house and all that kind of stuff there's an example of the um people who came over from vietnam in the 1980s the boat people and i know some of them where they did the multifamily thing so kind of like community but basically two two families buying a property in uh, California they all had low-wage jobs but they bought it and then rapidly paid off the debt and then they had it cash and they sold it they so one it was a good um, um, whether by luck or by whatever a, a good financial transaction because they bought property in a city as opposed to those people going to a commune out in a rural area they bought property in a city that was growing and where property prices were appreciating so the aspect of pooling the resources to buy something that that would appreciate end up working out for them the, the property appreciated they paid off the debt by having four or five six workers six incomes paying it off they sold it they then were able to reallocate the profits and then they each then could individually afford to, to buy property so that would be i think you know some kind of strategy towards and falling back to the multifamily aspect of it where you have to group back together into you know a multi-generational family to reduce the the living expense cost of, of property so you know being able to be flexible to see do I need to fall back to that and then being able to rapidly cut off expenses like I said, when the dot bomb happened um, you know I would make a certain amount of money and then suddenly for you know a year or two but until I could relaunch a career you know I couldn't afford certain expenses looking back on that one of my main problems was I did not aggressively and and as as agilely cut back on expenses uh, quickly enough because you know it still worked out for me but it was kind of thing if it had lasted longer before i could relaunch a career i would have been in more trouble okay I've got a question. sure um you talking about pre-theory adaptivity of millennials or people in general yeah um in finding employment and self-employed mm -hmm. What changes would you recommend in our educational system, K through beyond college ed, that would facilitate individuals and their ability to creatively uh, adapt to the environment? So um, the question was uh, how suggestions in regards to changing the educational system so that people can be more adaptable to that. Um, one, I would say that they they would need to be. Um, a quick focus on um, basic budgeting and planning uh, for people so they can make some fundamental choices with a you know um, with a better plan right to, to, so they you know because I think a lot of the problems that, um, that society has is because people are ill-equipped to make those financial choices so that that'd be one aspect that is not covered as much a uh, quick uh, aside and, and statistic related to that there is um, some studies around um, overall net worth and income around society they make the classic example of you know the top 80 billionaires have as much money as the bottom 70 80 percent so I of course looked at that in, in detail and I can say that you know I have more money than the bottom 50 percent right actually the poorest person has more money than the bottom 45 percent why is that because the bottom 10 to 20 percent are in debt right they are have they have negative net worth so you accumulate those bottom people and then they have a negative trillion so it takes a lot of more poor people to overcome that so you don't want to be in that negative area and it wouldn't take that much to you know still hard work but you know to get out of the, the negative area so um and then go to education um so then you know you want to have advantage over other people you need, you need to be able to identify where you can um to get that and, and to try to more rapidly 
learn something, not just the basic skills, but to, to get to something specialized where you can, where it's um, more highly monetizable because it will, you know, as AI and things get automated, it's, you know, it's the elite things in a particular narrow area that, that monetize. Just like the, the thing about the number one, you know, wins, number two gets something, and number three gets crap all, right? So you have that, I think there was that uh, in Glinger and Roth, you know, top guy gets the, the, the Cadillac, number two gets steak knives, number three gets fired, you know. So you, you want to get, find that niche where you can be the winner, right? And yeah. So the more you can spread that out, the more you can test to find what that is. And then find a situation where that works for you. Okay? Thank you, Brian. Thank you.